The researchers tackling one of the toughest parts of fighting this pandemic, finding those people who don't show any symptoms of COVID-19 before they unknowingly infect others. ABC's Zachary Keish joins us with more on that part of the story. Zachary, good morning. Good morning to you as well. It's all about the usefulness of the data to help it inform outcomes. You know, these are apps that many of us have used for fun or just to make life easier, but now they're being deployed on the front lines in the fight against COVID-19. This morning, teams of scientists and engineers are developing new technology in hopes of detecting and tracking possible COVID-19 cases. Wearable tech companies like Aura, a ring you wear on your finger, are leading the charge, partnering with the University of California to study whether physiological data collected by the Aura ring, combined with responses to daily symptom surveys, can predict illness symptoms. Some researchers say the potential appears promising. GMA spoke overnight to one Aura user who went to the doctor and tested positive for the virus after his app notified him to changes in his body. It said that, take it easy, you are not doing fine. And it said that I had a fever during the night, which was a bit of a surprise because I didn't feel that. I am pretty sure that uh, it kept a lot of people not getting uh, the virus from our family. Another device, Whoop, a wearable band that tracks physiological changes like sleep and heart rate, appears to have helped another COVID-19 patient. Brian Eisenberg began developing symptoms, so he checked his Whoop app that showed his physiological markers had dropped. He then sought medical attention and tested positive for the virus. Woke up that morning, and as you said, that, that score dropped to 7%. My fever was 103. Um, you know, and I was obviously quite concerned. The apps, although promising, still have not been reviewed by independent researchers. Experts like Dr. John Brownstein are optimistic about the potential. Transmission can happen with people that are asymptomatic. But imagine a world where you could actually identify people that are ill, even if they're not experiencing symptoms. Those people then could essentially undergo some level of isolation, ultimately reducing the impact on our health care systems. An example of some of these new technologies being rolled out right here in New York City, Mount Sinai Hospital has rolled out an app called Stop COVID-19. In many ways, its success will be predicated on how many people in the community use it. But the goal is to uh, be able to track those clusters and those outbreaks so that medical professionals and government officials can improve response. Eva? All right, Zachary Keish for us. Thank you. And joining us now from Massachusetts is Dr. Todd Ellerin, an ABC News medical contributor and infectious disease physician. Thank you, Dr. Ellerin, for being with us this morning. How helpful do you think the technology we just heard about can be in fighting coronavirus? Well, these wearables are basically track changes in vital signs. So your respiratory rate, your heart rate, your temperature, and it may be a device that can, that can detect changes of infection early before a person has symptoms. So for COVID-19, we're hearing that people can transmit the virus before they have symptoms. So if these devices can detect changes, that may be helpful to prevent them from spreading the virus to someone else. And the CDC now recommends that people wear non-medical cloth face coverings when they're out in public. What are your thoughts on that? Okay, medical masks would be better, okay? But we know there's a national shortage. So these cloth face coverings may be the next best thing. But remember, they may prevent you from spreading virus to another person, but they may not prevent you from acquiring the virus. So still, the social distancing, the stay-at-home guidance is most important. And don't forget to wash your hands. I, I want to make sure that when people are covering their face with a mask, that they don't think that they don't have to wash their hands. It's not an excuse to not take all the other precautions as well. Right. For those people on the front lines of this, PPEs can really be lifesavers. What are some of the latest strategies that we are seeing for optimizing their use? Okay, so remember, in the United States, we've never had to do any extended use of respirators or masks. But right now we have to because it's such a short supply of PPE. So what many centers are using now are either ultraviolet radiation or hydrogen peroxide. At our center, we've begun using hydrogen peroxide, which is basically you put these respirators in a chamber, it heats up the hydrogen peroxide, which is a liquid. It becomes something between a liquid and a gas, stays in there for 15 to 45 minutes, and hopefully will sterilize it effectively. 
All right, Dr. Todd Ellerin, thank you so much for joining us and for those tips this morning. Yeah, let's hope that uh, that ultraviolet, te ultraviolet technique works. Dr. Ellerin, thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.